In the previous lecture, we discussed the energy density that is carried by an electromagnetic wave when it propagates through space. Now we're going to discuss a similar concept that deals with energy and electromagnetic waves known as the pointing vector. Now the pointing vector is named after a British physicist named John Henry Pointing. Now the energy that an electromagnetic wave carries per unit time, per unit area, is given by the pointing vector, which is given by an uppercase S with the vector symbol on top. So the pointing vector is a vector, it has magnitude as well as direction. Now what exactly are the units of the pointing vector? So because the pointing vector is the energy per unit time, per unit area that implies the units are joules per seconds multiplied by meters squared. Now because joules per seconds is simply power and power has the units of watts that means the units are also equal to watts per meter squared. So that means another way we can interpret the pointing vector is the power that is transported by an electromagnetic wave per unit area. Now the direction of the pointing vector points in the same direction of the velocity of the wave. So if the wave for example is propagating uh, in the positive direction along the x-axis in this direction, that means the pointing vector points in the same direction as velocity in the positive direction along the x-axis axis. So, now let's discuss the magnitude of our pointing vector. So what exactly is the equation that gives us the magnitude? Recall that electromagnetic waves consist of alternating electric fields and alternating magnetic fields. So let's suppose we have one particular electromagnetic wave that is propagating in the positive direction along the x-axis where this line represents our x-axis. So this is our y-axis and notice the electric field lies along the y-axis and the z-axis is pointing out of the board. That is given by the following blue uh, magnetic field. So our magnetic field points along the z-axis. Now, imagine that an electromagnetic wave, as described in this diagram, is traveling along the x-axis and it passes through an area given by A that is perpendicular to the x-axis. So this is our area A. Now, in some infinitely small time period dt, we know the wave travels an infinitely small distance given by dx as shown by this infinitely small distance. Now, to find dx, we can simply multiply the speed of our propagating wave, which is given by c, the speed of electromagnetic radiation, multiplied by dt, the time it takes for it to travel this distance. So the speed multiplied by the time gives us the distance. Now let's answer the following question. What exactly is the energy contained in an infinitely small volume D capital V, where D capital V represents the volume inside this entire region. So we want to calculate how much energy is found in this region when the wave travels through that volume. So dv is equal to the area multiplied by the infinitely small width given by dx. So a multiplied by dx, where a is simply equal to, or where dx is equal to c multiplied by dt. So the infinitely small volume dv is equal to a multiplied by the speed of electromagnetic radiation multiplied by dt. Now, 
let us now find what the energy is. Well, we know the energy is equal to the energy density multiplied by the volume. In other words, the infinitely small amount of energy carried by this electromagnetic radiation is equal to the density, the energy density given by lowercase u, multiplied by the infinitely small volume given by dv. Now, in the previous lecture, we saw that the total energy, the total energy density u is equal to epsilon naught multiplied by the square of our electric field E. Now we multiply that by dV which is given by this quantity. So AC multiplied by dT. So we multiply these out, we get the following result. Epsilon naught multiplied by A multiplied by C multiplied by E squared multiplied by DT. So now we are ready to find what the magnitude of our pointing vector is. So the pointing vector is simply the quantity of energy that passes per some unit time per unit area. So we see that S is equal to the energy divided by time times area. So we see that the energy transported in time dt per area A is equal to du divided by dt multiplied by A. So du is equal to this entire product. So we see that dt appears on top and bottom and the a's appear on top and bottom. We cancel these dt's out and these a's out and we see that the magnitude of the pointing vector is equal to epsilon naught multiplied by c multiplied by the square of the electric field. Now we can also describe the magnitude of our pointing vector in terms of our magnetic field B. So, recall that the ratio of our electric field to magnetic field at any given moment in time is equal to 1 divided by the square of the square root of the product of epsilon naught and our mu naught. So if we rearrange this equation and represent our E in terms of B and then plug that into this equation, we get this result. So the magnitude of the pointing vector S is equal to C multiplied by B squared divided by mu naught. So these equations both give us the same exact quantity. This equation gives, us, gives it in terms of E and this equation gives it in terms of B, our magnetic field. And finally, we can also represent the magnitude of the pointing vector in terms of both the magnetic field and the electric field. Recall that C is equal to E divided by B. So we take this equation, we plug E divided by B into the C, we see that one of the B's will cancel, and we're left with E multiplied by B divided by mu naught. So this is another way that we can calculate the magnitude of the pointing vector. So we see that our magnitude of our vector is equal to 1 divided by mu naught multiplied by the cross product of E and B. So notice these three equations give us the energy per unit time per unit area at any given instant in time. In the next lecture, we're going to discuss the average amount of the pointing vector.